far, uh, so far, G Julia. I mean, nice to have you with us, incidentally. Carson, it's been an extremely positive week for the Australian share market so far. I've got the graph of the week so far behind me, and you can see that it's a rise, a rise of 1.5%, and it does look like we're going to add on to those gains today. All sectors have tri traded higher with one exception, and that's the energy sector, which has lost ground. But the best sector by far has been the information technology space. Now, this is a smaller sector on our market, and it's been boosted up by a strong performance by the NASDAQ in the U.S. We saw the NASDAQ hitting the highest levels that we've seen in a decade this week. So technology stocks doing well on the back of that. And we've seen some great individual performances as well. One still has been the standout in the ASX 200. It announced yesterday that it will be looking at the closure of its oil and gas pipe business but also some of those beaten down stocks in the last 52 weeks have made a comeback this week we've seen billabong up by 10 percent we've also seen qbe insurance gaining nine percent and the uranium miners paladin as well as era gaining almost nine percent as well so altogether another positive week for the australian share market in the year to date so far we've seen a positive performance by aussie shares and it's really been driven by the industrial the energy and the discretionary sector in fact if we have a look at why we're lagging behind the u.s and some of our offshore peers it is because the two biggest sectors on our market are lagging while we've seen the industrial the energy and the discretionary space gaining more than 10 percent we've actually seen the material sector only up by 5.8 percent in comparison and the financial space only up by three and a half percent. Can you do a soft shoe shuffle to one side? Because you are covering some of that wonderful week performance. <laughs> yes, I thought there might have been something hidden. There it is, that spike up. What happened at that point? Just remind people where you got that tick higher dramatically. Well, we've seen an extremely positive performance in terms of the U.S. market, and economic data has certainly uh, ref helped that performance along as well. If we have a look at economic numbers overnight, once again, a positive lead coming through from those numbers. In fact, initial jobless claims the key one, and we did see a surprise for last week. If we have a look at initial jobless claims, these are now around about half the level that we've seen four years ago. So it does look like the employment situation in the US looking better. We also saw some uh, other good bits of economic data. And of course, the Greek bailout now fading to the background. It does look like the green light for the second Greek bailout has been given the go ahead. So the market with that clear out of the way, focusing on some of the economic numbers coming out of the US. Unfortunately, the picture hasn't been so rosy on the growth side coming out of China and that's really held our market back a little bit in comparison to the growth that we've seen in the US overnight one of the things to have been watching were the oil prices we saw oil prices with a sharp decline although by the end of the session we did see oil prices making a bit of a comeback and there were reports during the US session that the US as well as the UK was going to uh, uh, release strategic um, supplies of oil to the market to help stimulate growth but I know Obama I spokesperson and saying that uh, those reports were untrue. So we did see oil prices, uh, I guess, making back some of the losses, but still down uh, during the overnight session. But altogether, it should be a positive for the Australian market. And of course, the key level to be watching for the Aussie market in that 30-day graph, what you'll see is that every time we've hit above that 4,300-point mark, we've seen a pullback. This week, we haven't managed to hit that 4,300-point mark uh, as yet. But today, that's really going to be the resistance area for the market. Look, or so it would seem, uh, Vodafone Australia, uh, who might be a buyer? Any talk of Telstra circling? There are reports around that uh, Vodafone Australia may be up for sale and it's a report in the Australian that's running with this story today and it looks like uh, some preliminary sales documents may have been shopped around but it's to overseas buyers at this stage in South Korea, the Middle East uh, being the primary uh, receivers of this document. And of course it's been a very difficult year for Vodafone Australia and the flip side is that it's been a positive for Telstra which has gained a lot in terms of uh, mobile customer migration. But it is a difficult time to be selling a telecom stock, and that's because the equity markets and risk assets have been rallying, which means it's been a negative for defensive. In fact, the only sector which has lost ground this year so far is the telecom sector. So it is a difficult environment, made worse by the fact uh, that uh, Vodafone Australia has had so many problems. In 2011, it made a loss of $336 million. We saw 554,000 jobs being cut, and in the first 
first half of last year we saw 375,000 customers leave, leaving Vodafone. So all that's been a positive for uh, the likes of Telstra as well as Optus. But they've probably already received the bulk of, uh, of uh, Vodafone's um, customer m migration. Any new player into uh, this area, of course, uh, it would be quite difficult for Telstra in terms of competition sense but any player looking to take over Vodafone Australia would be looking at a pretty large uh, capital expenditure spend to try and get Vodafone Australia back on the right road.